three, two, one. Welcome to the David the Dog Trainer podcast, episode ninety three. We're here three days later, and yep. we are about to do another podcast. And we just talked about a bunch of stuff on the last podcast. So that's the first part of today's yeah. podcast. Second thing. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to get into another, we'll call it a video reaction. I don't even want to call them reviews anymore because I don't think this is like, oh, look, I'm reviewing yeah. this and that, right? But I want to react to uh, a dog trainer that I've been asked by a couple of different people over the last few months uh, about, which is uh, Beckham's Dog Training. Now, Beckham's Dog Training, I have seen personally uh, <laughs> pop around on YouTube all the time. Got, you know, 303,000 subscribers. It sounds, it looks like he's been doing this for a very long time. I literally don't know anything about this dog trainer aside from the fact that he posts a lot of socialization related stuff. Um, and um, I think somebody told me he used to train like exotic animals or something like that, right? Looks, <laughs> like, he's a balance, looks like he's a balanced trainer, right? Okay. He's not like a force free guy or anything like that. And again, a lot of his videos are socialization related. And if you guys know a lot about what I do and what I preach for, I think a big thing that's missing in the dog world is more socialization related stuff, right? That's why I like, um, you know, guys like uh, Brandon Fouché and other people out there that are doing true socialization work and not relying so much on obedience commands and stuff to work through things. So I want to watch this video, just kind of react to it. Um, this is his most viewed video on his YouTube channel, and it's the one that I've seen pop around all over the place. Um, it's called, Can a Dog Fix Another Dog's Aggression? Watch Prince in Action. Now again, from a quick five minute review of the channel, um, just as I was searching for a video earlier today, um, Prince is his dog, so it's his Doberman, and it looks like it is the dog he uses to help to rehabilitate a lot of these dogs with dog aggression issues, right? Mm. And the other thing that I think could possibly be interesting or cool about this video is just based on this title, it's implying a lot of the things we talk about, which is allowing dogs to figure out that communication kind of on their own and work through some of these social issues, mm. right? So um, we're going to take a look at this, and we're going to kind of see what we get with it. Got an ad first. <laughs> Ooh, the H and M core collection. Skip. <laughs> All right. So starting off a little before and after. Can't really tell what was going on in the before and after, but we'll uh, we'll find out. You're gonna see a pretty crazy video of this hound getting in essentially a fight with Prince, Prince teaching him, and then him being with a bunch of other dogs. It's an awesome video. I'm gonna do two things in this. I am gonna explain how we arrived to that fence Dude, finally one, being. Okay, so one thing here, right? So just look at this scenery, right? All yeah. these fucking guys in California, I'm assuming this is California, yeah. right? All these fucking dog traders in California have the most beautiful goddamn <laughs> backdrops. <laughs> ever and yeah i don't want to live in california nor do i want to have a business in california because yeah. i don't want to get taxed out the wazoo but it's beautiful it is so that's that's one thing this dude's got going for him opened because it's an important process for you guys to understand the other thing we're going to do is break down that quote-unquote fight and i'm going to show you a bunch of body language within that fight that's quite interesting so here's how we arrived to that gate being open I 100% of the time set every one of these dogs up for sec success. For what sex. do I mean by that? Ooh. It would not be fair if these people drove an hour, two hours, 30 minutes, opened their car door, bring the, brought the dog down, and I said, oh, and Prince is now coming out to meet you. Dog's got pent-up energy. He just got to a new place. That is not fair. A lot of dogs would go... I'm going to bite this dog, or at least please get away from me, dog. You're too much. It is not fair if I drove to these people's houses and brought Prince into the backyard. It would not be fair if Prince is being pet by the owner or the dog is being pet by the owner and the other dog comes up. There is a lot of things that would not be fair to let Prince with a reactive or aggressive dog, but none of those happen 
in these videos that you guys have seen. Think about what... Okay, so basically what he's implying here, which I totally agree with, is socialization in order for it to go properly is contingent on us setting up the environment properly. So it's, you know, obviously we're going to introduce the dogs, yeah. right? But there's some groundwork we could put in place, um, whether it's things we do with the dog ahead of time, if they just got out of the car, let him go to the bathroom and just get used to being in the place first, mm -hmm. whether it's um, making sure that, again, he was talking the owners petting the dogs or things like that, making sure we're not adding resources for competition and stuff like that into it. We basically do all of these types of things to set the environment up properly to set the dogs up for success. Mm -hmm. Set them up for sex. <laughs> <laughs> See, in any of these videos where Prince gets mad at a dog, the owners come in, and if you haven't seen it, I'm explaining to you. Now, the owners come in. We walk down to the pasture. The dog 99% of the time poops. Yeah. We want them to Love be. It. So he's now showing us barky, whatever. He doesn't look terrible, but but she's brought him to me because he is, quote, unquote, aggressive. Dogs go to the pasture. They run around. They poop, which, like, helps them kind of relieve stress. They smell other dogs. They desensitize they get energy out. I try to run with them. Then we come up. Then I always, like you're seeing right now, put Prince on the deck so that this dog can, if this dog was scared of Prince, this dog would run away, which we've seen many times. You've probably seen the videos. The dog now, stands that's not necessarily true, yeah. right? Dogs can have a conditioned association through a barrier that something they're scared of, they're emboldened by that restraint to act out quote unquote yeah. aggressively right there's it's funny there's some videos that go around like viral videos that aren't mm. even like dog training related they're just kind of funny right mm. but but tells this point exactly which is you'll see there's one in particular where there's like a fence that like automatically goes in and out right and there's a couple dogs over here a couple dogs over here and they're at the fence just <laughs> right like freaking the yeah. fuck out and as they're doing it the fence is slowly opening and they're like and well, as soon yeah. as that fence goes away, they, they just, run to the other, yeah. <laughs> run to the other <laughs> side of the fucking field. Yeah, right. Not emboldened so, anymore. Yeah, right. So, so barriers can create weird displays of behavior out of dogs based mm -hmm. on the state of mind that they're in, right? And again, it's a condition association. That's what dog reactive dogs, right? You know, obviously the tension on the leash is typically what creates that reactivity, but even the first couple times when you remove that tension, because they're so used to leash resembles tension and restraint in my head, mm. you'll still get those responses out of them. Right? Yeah. Feet away and barks. Well, that tells me something. <laughs> the dog doesn't want any smoke. He doesn't want to fight. He's like... He don't want none he of that smoke. Not saying smoke. This dog wants to fight, but this dog definitely isn't running away when he saw a dog. It looks like a reactive. That's telling. Now, does me. that mean every dog that runs up to the gate wants to fight? No. It means sometimes a, the best defense is a good offense. The dog is saying, "I know I can run away, but I just feel like telling this dog to get out of here." There's nuance to all this. My point is, there we have set this dog up for success. He's desensitizing the prince. He doesn't have to run up and be mean to prince. This is prince's house. When this dog finally comes out in about 30 seconds, when you're going to see this, it, I tell the owner to walk away. She's got to be somewhere else. There's not personal protection is not the reason this dog goes at prince. Property protection is not the reason this dog goes at prince. Too much pent up energy from a long drive is not the reason this dog goes at prince. The only reason this dog goes at Prince and most of these dogs in these videos that you see me do go at Prince is because they're being jerks or they're being aggressive. Okay, that's it. And so guess what hap needs to happen? The dog needs to be checked. Okay, we're good. Back up. I don't necessarily know about that. Right, again, like, now I'm not, uh, again, I'm not, the uh, guy seems like he generally, like, he, I'm sure he knows what he's doing, right? Yeah. But the, the philosophy he's kind of explaining, I don't necessarily agree with, right? Yeah. Like, a lot of those things he described can definitely contribute to the reason why a dog would go after another dog, right? Again, now, one thing I've spoken about quite a bit is, now, he said, sometimes it's just the dog being a jerk, right? Like, that I, I could agree with, right? But mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that they're being aggressive, right? Some dogs yeah. can just be controlling of situations and be controlling out of fear and can be emboldened to be controlling out of fear because of all of the variables he described. Mm -hmm. the pent-up energy being behind a fence right yeah the owner petting them like all of those number of different things like they all lead to each other like as a sequence right yeah. so we'll see what happens when he introduces them <laughs> hey you back up go 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 ready 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 open the gate
Okay, so right off the rip here. <laughs> right off the rip. Mm-hmm. That dog did not go after the no. Doberman, right? Not he at ran all. up to him with a lot of energy. Yeah. That was not at all, in the slightest, a single hint of aggression. No. Not a single hint of it. If anything, there's a lot of frustration because of the muzzle. We'll see this a lot too, right? Talk about setting dogs up for success. Now, I do, let me clarify. I do the same thing he does with this, where if I get a dog in and I need to socialize the dog and I'm a little questionable about you know, what their behavior might be, I'm going to put a muzzle on the dog. And in a lot of these cases, in 99.9% of these cases, the dog has never wore a muzzle before. Mm -hmm. Or if they've wore it before, they wore it for like a a cumulative five minutes in their entire life. So that alone, being in it, all the factors you described, being in a new place, pent up being in the car, right? Now this muzzle on his face, him being pushed away by some new guy that he doesn't know, and then some dog coming barreling out. Yeah. All of that mixed together oh, yeah. is going to create maybe a pushy dog that goes running up to him. But if anything, I think his dog acted way more inappropriately than he did. In oh, situation. yeah. Let's watch. Now, we'll keep this rolling, but let's let's zoom this back a second. Oh, how do I do this? I always say zoom. Let me rewind this back a second. All right. So watch this, right? Back up. <laughs> hey, you back up. Go. 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 Ready? Ready, ready, open the gate. All right, run over to him, sniffing him. Prince going after him, right? Yeah. Look, he's trying to sniff him. Look at this. Prince! Prince! And he's yelling at Prince now. Like, yeah. like that, all of that was a mess. Yeah. <laughs> it was his dog just being the bad one. Dude, dude, that dog did nothing wrong. No! That dog ran up to sniff Prince, and Prince immediately got extremely defensive over him. Yeah. Now, do I think Prince attacked that dog? No. Do I think Prince was acting aggressively? No. But that was a very – talk about a dog just – what did he say? Being uh, – being a, not a dick. What did, how did, what did he say? Yeah. Uh, I, don't, I don't remember what he said. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> he was talking to like, you know, they just do it because they're being a dick or, or something yeah. like that. That was Prince just being a dick right yeah. there. Yeah. Now we're going to watch and in then, slow motion. And then, hey, I want to, oh, we're going to watch in slow motion. We'll break down the slow motion. Gate is going to be opened. The hound is going to chase Prince and hit him in the side. And you're going to see it in a minute. There might have been a bite in there. There, there might was not no have. bite. Okay. Look at this. He's running out. And Prince is doing nothing. He's uh, Prince is on his own property. Look, he He's ran desensitized over to Prince. And this is the meeting he has. It's inappropriate. The single best way for this dog to learn his lesson is for the dog that he hits or potentially tries to bite to apply the punishment not the trainer. It works sometimes with the trainer, sometimes it doesn't. Prince looks serious. Here's the thing with Prince, though, that's the greatest thing ever. His response is appropriate. He has not bit the dog one single time. He is just saying, knock it off. Continuing to pursue, though. Now, I want you to watch something right here. The lip lick from Prince right now, right there. He's saying, if you want this to stop, this can stop. And then the dog goes at him a tiny bit. Prince goes at him a little tiny bit. Just response. He's just responding. Now, here's where Prince goes. He's going at him. He's trying to to sniff him. (laughs) And he's frustrated he has the muzzle on. So that burst of energy we ran over and he, like, hit Prince with that muzzle. Again, that was likely just due to the muzzle itself. And a lot of dogs, the first instinct when you put that muzzle on them, rub it against everything. They come up to people and they're just fucking... off of me right you know how many times i've been smacked in the shins repeatedly with a muzzle just because the dog's frustrated with it right Uh i've had a dog come barreling over to me and just like it's like they run full speed and they're just bam you know side of the (laughs) face to like my fucking leg yeah right and they do that to dogs too and stuff right and again again i'm not saying prince was being aggressive here. he obviously didn't bite him or anything but you'll Mm -hmm. see right here right this dog is just trying hey, to interact, more? tried to sniff the butt. And I don't mean Look that in an attitude way. He goes yeah. for Come a little on. bit for the backside of Prince, and Prince says, okay, you, I've been cool to you, but if you want to keep doing this, I'm going to not be cool. It's going to get more and more. The response now, is going to get... Now, let me clarify, right? It's not even that I necessarily have an issue with any of this, Yeah. right? Like, dogs got to figure their shit out, mm-hmm. right? 
and and they're going to figure their shit out. And this dog is going to learn, whoa, like, I don't mess with this dog. Yeah. Right? Clearly. Right? Yeah. This is probably a very dominant male dog. Right? Which, which, is, which is fine. Yeah. Right? And I think it's necessary for dogs to meet dogs of those different types of personalities and be around that type of stuff. So yeah. they can understand, you know, dogs need to understand this sense of, like, <laughs> safety and danger. Right? Mm-hmm. That's what, that's what you know, alters behavior ultimately is them understanding safety and danger in their environment. Yeah. Right. Um, I just think that was an over the top response to a dog that wasn't actually trying to do anything to this dog. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is it's probably not the dog I would have used initially to try to alter the dog's behavior. Yeah. <clears throat> more and more every single time he does it. I think I know it is completely appropriate for Prince to do what he did. He did not hurt the dog in any way. He said, you cannot do that. And it came from the dog, not from a trainer, not from a leash, not from an e-collar. It is the most natural way that it could have possibly been done. Now, that I don't disagree with, right? Like, you could tell actually a second ago. Here, let's take this back even another second here. Right right here. Anyway, Watch he this. said, you cannot do that. turns around. And it came from the dog, not from a trainer, not from a leash, not from That is a dog right e-collar. there. It is respecting a boundary, right? That's what that is, obviously, which is fine, right? Again, I have no no problem with any of that. I the, yeah. the What I'm seeing makes sense to me. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Again, I'm just saying that this dog, I don't think really did anything wrong that warranted it. Yeah. This is probably not even in the slightest an aggressive dog, which is why in four seconds we're going to see the dog off muzzle with all the other dogs. Yeah. natural way that it could have possibly been done. Right. Best thing for him. Yeah, and Prince is the one I've, since I watched the show, like, trust is Prince. Best thing for him. Dog, I, no, I even been, I have no idea. Greatest thing for that dog just happened right now. Yeah. He, now look at it. They're over it. <laughs> Prince isn't mad. He's not holding a grudge. He is, he is, he let him know that what he did was totally inappropriate because it was totally, absolutely inappropriate. He tried to essentially bite him in the, Side and try to bite and then him. Prince let him know, mm-hmm. and then Prince said, "I'm I'm I'm over it. I don't hate you." Yeah. He doesn't hate him. Good. He had to tell him what was up, and he needed to be told what was up. Yeah. And now, and now he's not perfect, but he's not attacking. Now he was not attacking you, to begin. Okay, this no. is again the video. If all of this like the the talking was not there, I got. I like, you know what, I like this stuff, right? I like yeah. watching those types of conversations happen 100%. The talking yeah. is what's killing me right now, yeah. right? Like the things he's saying, I do not, I, I don't agree with those things. Yeah. Can't, you, you cannot, we got to do more of this today. But, Princey. Additionally, he was talking about not petting the dogs while they're doing it, right? Setting up for success, things like that. Yeah. I don't understand why he's interacting yeah, with them like know. that. Good boy. <clears throat> Good boy. Good boy. And l- best boy. So hold on a second here. So this is this is kind of where you really get into the kicker with things, mm-hmm. right? We talk about how dogs can act more intensely because they feel emboldened around people, around environments, things like that. Mm-hmm. Whatever this thing is that he's doing right now, if they're like, good boy, you're the best boy. You're such a good boy. Give me some kisses. Right after a really intense response like that, uh-huh. those are the things that are going to embolden and make Prince's responses to the other dogs more intense. Yeah. You're going to make it more intense, right? Yeah. That like kind of what I would consider... It was a correction, right? It wasn't yeah. an attack, but an over-the-top correction, right? Yeah. Likely is continuing to become over-the-top like that because of things like this. Yeah. Um. Real quick, uh, would you say, because the whole time he's saying, like you said, like, <laughs> we're going to let it happen. The dogs are going to figure it out. But then, like, he stopped his dog. He stopped his dog because he knew that Prince was being over-the-top. Yeah. Right. There's no other reason why he would have needed to go, Prince. I know. That's right. <laughs> Unless he realized you're being a little too much right now. Yeah. Right. Which again is is fine. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with yeah. that. But he's making it seem like everything he did was perfect right there. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Exactly. And it was. It was not. It was not. Best boy. 
And again, this is still going on. Like, cool. Look at him. He's still doing it. Yeah. Like, what are you doing right now? What? They're having a moment, bro. Like, seriously. So what I'm doing with Prince is not, it's not what it looks like, which is saying, oh, my God, you did great and reinforcing him. It is, but it's because his nervous system is really high and I need to calm him down. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I know I shouldn't be doing it. His nervous... Wait, hold on. But his nervous system is high, and I need to calm him down. Meaning, my dog's being a little too much right now. Yeah. <laughs> right? Additionally, that's not how you calm him down. No. That's not how you calm him down. Oh, boy. All right. That's our good boy. Yeah. And he still that's does. Nice but you're adding that's energy. Come on, buddy. Yeah. Hey, you're doing really good. Pats, pats, <laughs> pats. That's not cool. No. Oh boy! See, this is why. Okay, I, I also want to say here, I've st I've stopped doing these reaction videos for a while now. Right? It's been a while since we've done one of these yes. because of this. Right? Like yeah. stuff like <laughs> this stuff. Fr <laughs> it just frustrates me. Right? This yeah. is like when we were doing the Tom Davis ones, and I did. I felt a little bad after I did the Tom Davis one because like I was getting a like a little too frustrated in some of the parts. Right? Mm -hmm. And like. You know, again, I'm like going into this like positive mind, never watching this guy's videos, right? He's very popular, obviously. Mm -hmm. But like as you break these things down, there's just some things that it just doesn't make. There's the logic behind it just doesn't really make sense. Yeah. So, all right, let's see what else we got. Okay, now I wouldn't do it, Luke. It ain't smart, dude. Yeah, but not, okay. But, the, okay, now we're really getting into this, right? So he just basically turned himself into a resource there, right? Mm -hmm. He talked about calming the nervous system down, but really what he did there is embolden him more. This dog went over to go sniff him, and he said, I wouldn't do it? Yeah. What do you, like, is he not allowed to sniff? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, what like, the fuck? That doesn't make any sense. And you can no. see the side eye this fucking dog gave him because he's, like, coming over towards my dude right yeah. now, right? Like, yeah. That's where you get into like un like some people will like and, and and again right, Caesar used to do a lot of this right and I fucking love Caesar right but he mm -hmm. like with like Daddy his his like pit bull that he had that he would take everywhere and like be like his rehabilitation dog and stuff like that okay. right they would like idolize a dog like you're the perfect dog trainer right like Prince you know fixes the he has all these videos like Prince fixes this dog Prince fixes this dog mm -hmm. right but like really. He's not. <laughs> no, not at all. Right? Like, like if anything, you would want a balanced dog that could bring out the best in your dog while also providing a proper correction. And a lot of the yeah. dogs you would use for this, right? And even my dogs are not all good fits for this kind of work, right? Vera used to be the one that I would use all the time for it because she was very good at kind of doing the disciplining, but also was very playful and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But Deli's not a good fit for this stuff. Vinny's not really a good fit for this stuff. Waffles is kind of becoming the good fit for it, but like he doesn't really have the tough guy bone <laughs> in his body to like no. provide the discipline, <laughs> but he's very playful, right? Yeah. So, you know, when I look for stuff like this, you would want a dog that once this dog is acting more appropriately and wanting to go sniff, they're going to allow that behavior, mm -hmm. right? This is a dog that just said, hey, I, you stay away from me, right? Like, I don't even want yeah. anything to do with you right now. Yeah. <sighs> okay. We need to do this safely with other dogs because what <clears throat> just happened is this dog, for the first time since you've had him, got with a dog what now the floodgates hopefully open yeah. to where the next dog it goes right it we miss the two bites and it goes right into not sure of the dog but not biting the dog right. then the next dog it doesn't even <clears throat> it it doesn't even go to not sure of the dog it jumps right to where he is now it's like every dog it stair steps down now i've seen some dogs that just they're that high and that bad with every dog yeah. but i don't think that's him I think he. I think the next dog is going to be better, and the next dog is going to be better. Ads. Introducing the world's smartest fence. Halo Collar is a virtual fence inside. This dog is now with us at the board and train. He has a group of friends. You're going to see him. This is the first time he's been with his group of friends. This is a couple days ago. He's been with us for like five days. Now back to the facility, though. Dope fucking facility, dude. Yeah. Dope facility. It's Look at that crazy. pool. Yeah, it's pretty sick. It took us a oh, day. Oh, it's or got two a waterfall. Oh, yeah. Look he's at comfortable. That. Now he's with his friends. We're going to let all this is the first time he's meeting these guys. He's going to meet all these guys. He's going to go to the pasture with them. I'm just going to repeat some things that I said because I think it bears repeating. We set the dog up for success. Him going at Prince was unwarranted. 
and it needed to be corrected. And it was corrected the most effective way it could possibly be corrected, and that's from another dog. I'm not saying trainers or people have the dogs or have a dog or have the cojones, no offense, to do this. You have to be so darn sure that your dog is not going to hurt another dog. You can't possibly do this if your helper dog or your personal dog might hurt another dog. It can't be done, ever. That's just what I do and how I raise my dogs is to do this stuff, okay? Um, but he needed to be told that he cannot do that, and he was told that perfectly. Now he was with other dogs. He was set up for success. We did not put him with Prince right away to where he was defensive or defending mother, mom, or he had all this pent-up energy, or he was trying to be by himself. Then we desensitized him to Prince at the gate. We said, here's, here's a dog. Let's, let's get used to it. And you've seen me do that, that fence meeting many, many times before. And sometimes the dogs just calm down and you start to see a tail wag. And then you go, okay, great. This guy was like, I'm going to sit here and bark at you a whole, the whole time. So it warranted the muzzle on because we didn't know what he would do. And then we just let Prince out and said, listen, you want to be a jerk? Things happen. There's consequences in life. And he was a jerk. It was not the right way to approach a dog. I don't care that he's a hound and they're trained to do certain things and chase and nip at animals. This is the world that we live in. Now he's down with his friends, being a good boy, being happy. He's actually a really good dog. He's had, um, he's been to other trainers before. e collars have been used. He was a hunting dog previously. A lot of things have happened. Now the owner has him and she is doing an amazing job with him and this is kind of the final thing to get him she's never had him with a group of dogs before so now he's with dogs now he's with friends doing amazing that's the video i hope you guys uh learn the process and and learn something from that body language breakdown i think the biggest thing would be that lip lick no one seems to be able to recognize what a lip lick is well didn't your gut tell you when I pointed that lip lick out from Prince when his tongue was sticking out? Didn't your gut say that th that's a fight ender? He's basically saying, letting the other dog know, we can, we can stop this anytime. If you see, and they happen very quickly, if you see lip licks in the middle of fights, the dog that's lip licking is saying, I don't want to fight anymore. Prince was, uh, Prince was saying, I don't want to fight. We can stop this. I'll do it if you want to, but I really don't want to do this. All right, now that officially is the end of the video. That's the dog. He's a great boy. That's it. Hey, if you like this video, like it. And please, if you've been helped by it or you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I don't know, man. <laughs> Listen, I got, again, I got nothing against the actual socialization that was being done, but the interpretation of it just seemed kind of BS to me. Yeah. Right? It's It, it was just way too... My dog is so perfect, and your dog is so bad. <laughs> As really opposed was. to, there's a conversation happening right now, right? Both parties may be being a little bit inappropriate with things, yeah. right? And really what it is, is that other dog, it sounds like, hasn't had very much socialization in the past. Mm -hmm. The dog was just going in kind of hot. The dog was yeah. not trying to fucking bite those dogs. No. That's not at all what was going on. And then repeatedly after that, he tried to just sniff the other dog, and the other dog said... You don't want none of this smoke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, you, you don't want none of this smoke, right? Literally. What do you, I don't know, What do you dude. think about the whole lip licking thing? Hi, Is I'm it, Joel Beckman. And I'm Liz Beck. Does that have merit? I, or? I, I, again, I, I don't know as far as the lip licking in itself. Like, yeah. is that actually a fight ender? Is it not? Right? I think that you get into, like, all these different signals that dogs will put out, right, mm -hmm. as they're acting controlling or defensive or anything like that. Um, where, you know, he clearly, forget the lip lick, right, in that moment when he paused, you could tell he clearly, that was him standing his ground and waiting for the other dog to submit to that. Yeah. Right? Uh, I don't know if the lip lick really had so much to do yeah. with it. The other thing, too, is like, you know, calling it a fight. He was like, it's a fight ender, right? Like, mm -hmm. the thing with the thing with fighting or aggression or things like that is it's not like we're playing or we're fighting, right? I've talked about this many, many times. You know, play is 
a spectrum, right? Or dog communication is a spectrum. And if you have play on one side of things and you have aggression on other side of things, right? Mm -hmm. They could move all throughout that, right? Because play is really just two dogs trying to figure out who's more dominant than the other without actually fighting. So with that in mind, that display of dominance can intensify until it turns into actual aggression, which I would mm. define as intent to actually do harm. Yeah. Right. So because of that, right, as these dogs are trying to quote unquote dominate or figure each other out in that moment, Prince was clearly trying to be the dominant one, which oh, is yeah. fine, right? Like, mm -hmm. again, there's nothing wrong with that. But that display of dominance, that really intense display of dominance, you could tell was intensifying, which is why he ultimately stopped it, right, and interrupt that behavior. But he was waiting for the other dog to completely submit to him, right? Mm -hmm. Which, again, when you get into socialization and stuff like that, I think the no different than if I'm training a dog, if a dog is kind of training a dog using corrections and stuff like that, mm -hmm. we generally want to find a dog that's going to know how to vary the intensity of that correction based on the other dog. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, if the dog is just coming in a little hot a more minor correction as opposed to this, like if that, if, if, if a minor correction that was needed for that is a level four out of 10 Prince was maybe at a level seven out of 10 there or something like that. Yeah. You know? Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if it's the lip licking in particular yeah. or if it's just like he was really asserting himself over that dog and expecting complete submission out of the dog, which is why when the dog went back more respectfully, just to sniff, he still went back at him. He's like, no, I don't want you to interact with me at all right now. Yeah. Yeah, I do, I think I I one hundred percent agree. Like everything that was happening in the video was great, yeah. but like I feel like the commentary he was just like throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Kind of, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think a lot of people will do things like that to, and I'm not saying this is what this guy is doing at all, right? right? But a lot of people will do things like that to kind of try to sell people on training right i mean that yeah. dog clearly did a board and train with him which mm -hmm. is fine right like obviously yeah. like you want to do a board and train do a board and train but by projecting this your dog is really bad he needs to experience this a lot right yeah. now it's kind of like the selling point of like he really needs to stay here so we can do the rehab with him yeah. right when again i i don't know i didn't work with that dog right like you know it's it's hard to tell off of you know short form oh, yeah. videos or even like you know longer form videos mm -hmm. um, but that didn't seem it just didn't seem that bad, right? That no. seemed like likely you probably could have, you know, maybe got a couple of a little bit calmer of dogs out and yeah. like had them off muzzle pretty much right away with them. So, um, but this is the thing, you know, I mean like this is, you know, this is how he's gotten. Um, let's, let's see this one. When dogs flex on my dog, is when that what it you said? Live with moderate to Crazy altercations, out of control dogs meet their match. Right. And then also, you know, the thing is, too, like you could tell this has worked for him. Right. These kind of dramatic videos and stuff like that, which, you know, go for it. That's fine. Obviously, I don't think he's necessarily doing anything wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But some of it probably has turned into just the selling point with this. Right. Of like, look at these out of control, really aggressive dogs getting checked by my dog. But again, it's almost creating this facade in his head of, again, my dog is just perfect. Yeah. Right. And can act really intense and, and quote unquote, like aggressive towards these dogs. Yeah. Let's see what Craziest footage I've ever taken. This is my two dogs helping other dogs by backing them down, correcting them, letting them know that their behavior is not okay. This is Bosco. Watch this dog tries to bite Bosco, but doesn't get him right here. Now this situation from Bosco is not a situation where he wants to go, I'm going to whoop you. If he would have done anything, there would have been a fight. Bosco knew that he could defuse this by being the confident standing his ground. This is like the guy at the bar. The black doorman's like the guy at the bar who's insecure, thinks you were hitting on his girlfriend. <laughs> and the bigger, stronger guy's like, man, you got to chill out. You're fine. I'm not doing anything. But he's also got to show that he's the boss. Now, I don't know if he'll show the full speed ones, but have you ever seen... Um I think it's like they t they take video of dogs playing with each other and yeah. screen grab the moments that look really aggressive. Yeah. So by slowing this down, let's say he was just barking at him there. Woof, woof, woof. Mm -hmm. Woof. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if you yeah. grab the right moment or slow it down just enough, it's going to look like bites. Mm -hmm. In full speed, that might not look like that. So again, there's so much stuff you could do to make this stuff mm -hmm. look more intense than it actually is. Yeah. And he avoided a fight. This video many of you guys have seen before, and this is totally different than the last video of Bosco. So this is a dog who is actually out of his mind at the moment. 
He cannot control himself. He is also not a horribly aggressive dog, but he is doing things to other dogs that cannot be done in society because of the nature of where his brain is at the moment, because he is so under socialized. So he is just out of his mind and he's doing things where they can't take him anywhere and it gets worse and it gets worse. Restraint creates all this stuff, makes it worse, right? Just yeah. thought he's being held back the whole time. Yeah. And he's obsessed and he is doing things to Prince that are not cool. Now, what I like about Prince in this, now Bosco, the, my first, the Doberman, the Red Doberman you saw in the first video, he would have not put up with as much, okay? Prince is a more tolerant dog. Bosco was generally like, if you, I, I, I'm gonna let you know real quick you did something wrong. Prince is like more tolerant, trying to be tolerant. Oh, again, agreeing with him. The dog is being annoying as shit. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, obviously we, we would want to slow that down a little bit. And mm -hmm. obviously that would be a normal place for a dog to give a correction. So I'm mm -hmm. with him on that. I know that Prince is eventually going to do something and it's going to be done better than I'm going to do it. So Prince is tolerant. He's being as tolerant as he can. But this dog needs more than this. This dog is not going to stop us. And here it is right here. I want you guys to watch the pressure and how Prince does it because it's absolutely perfect. Perfect. Then I call him away at the end of it. Because he had to disengage him because he wouldn't have stopped there. That was not an appropriate correction. No. It's not. Like, it's, no. it's literally just not, right? Like, let's watch that again here. Right? We got a, a annoying as fuck playful dog, right? But here, I want you guys to watch the pressure and how Prince does it because it's absolutely perfect. Perfect. Then I call him away at the end of it and watch this dog. He's not... 100% fixed. Look at him. He's shell-shocked. He's different, though. <laughs> Completely different. Leo Prince is going to back this guy down because this is not okay behavior to go up to a nice dog at his house and bark at him and try to bite him. Prince is backing him down because this is the best thing for him, and the proof's going to be in the pudding right here. Backs him down, backs him down, and then the dog goes away. And at that point, Prince softens his body language. Now, he's going to go back at him because he's highly stimulated. That's okay. Prince is just going to keep backing him down until the guy understands that that's not appropriate behavior. Right here. He's going to back him down in a minute. And he also does play bows. Prince does play bows. Tell him, no, I'm not a threat. There's some socialization right there trying to smell Prince while Prince just stands there, which is perfect. He's got a leash on, so he can't run over and actually bit, sniff back him. Back him down. Try to smell him. Be soft. Let this guy know that he's okay. Old video. Bosco knew this guy was trouble, so he knew he had to come on strong. So he got right in his face. He let him bark it out. Now, he didn't. now, now, hold on. <laughs> Remember that first video we watched? How that other dog came in strong and then Pris fucking mm -hmm. lit his ass up over it? Yeah. That's exactly what this dog just did to this dog. <laughs> he got right in his face. He let so him bark it out. Oh, yeah. He didn't. We Wait knew he on. had to come on strong. There we go. Let's watch Try to smell again. him. Be soft. Let this guy know that he's okay. Yeah. Old video. Coming in hot. Bosco knew this guy was trouble, so he knew he had to come on strong. So he got right in his face. He let him bark it out. He didn't say, I'm going to whoop you. Play bell right there to try to calm the guy. And then watch the back down. The back down is what Bosco does the best, and he does it subtly. Right there. And then walks through him big and strong. And that guy leaves before Bosco leaves. This is going to be another video of Bosco saying, I want to be your friend but I'm also not going to back down. You notice the play bow as the guy was running up, Bosco was saying, hey, let's be friends. Then the dog goes in him. Bosco stands there. Just, he says, I'm not going to look away, but I'm not going to back down either. Keeps looking at him. Then you're going to see another play bow in here in a minute. Now, the play bows are generally to calm the dog down. My dogs, though, sometimes like to have a little fun with it, and they kind of like to test the dog and see what if the dog's going to go at them again. And that's what this play bow is about right here in just a second. He's going to do a play bow right here. He kind of knows it's going to elicit a reaction, but you got to have fun in life. So he gets another reaction. Bosco is sideways. He's not looking right at the dog. But then here's the key to... Now this stuff, again, I, you know, some of the stuff he's saying in these handful of clips, I, I you know, I don't know. Whatever, we're hit or miss. And again, we're all just interpreting this, right? None of us actually fucking know, right? Yeah. Um, but this stuff is the stuff that's fascinating to me that I love about socialization I talk about all the time is watching these conversations take place and happen, mm -hmm. right? Dogs, the key to Bosco what is the back down. He does a little lip like saying, hey, I don't want to fight. I know you're uncomfortable, but you can't come to my house and 
do whatever you want and go at me. So here's the back down right here. Look at this guy. One step back, two steps back, two steps back. Bosco looks at him in the eye, makes sure he's okay, and then he's going to walk away. Bosco got his point across. This video was about body language. If you want to see how I train my dogs, I'll put it up in the corner. You can watch it. Uh, how I train my dogs to be like this. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, all that stuff. All that stuff. Oh, oh man. I don't know. We'll at some point watch that, how he trains the dogs to do that. Because I'm curious to see what he yeah. has to say with those types of things. Again, I got no problem with the socialization. I think that, you know, frankly, like the concept of just allowing more to take place in socialization is absolutely and completely fine. And I totally agree with it. Yeah, right? 100%. I, I genuinely do. Right. And it seems like this guy is doing good socialization work. His interpretations seem very much like they're of this facade of he's almost like convinced himself his dogs are perfect with these types of things where yeah. clearly they have some faults of, of their own. Right. And mm -hmm. some places where they need to bring it down a couple of notches probably. Yeah. Right. And a part of that is the breed. Right. Like he's got power breed. They look like very well-bred Doberman, you know? Yeah. Um, so those dogs are going to be a little bit more intense, no different than Vinny's going to be a little bit more intense with another dog, right? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and then additionally, I think the the understanding that, like, these other dogs are just, like, so intense and so bad and stuff. Like, that first yeah. one in particular, that was... Yeah. That was kind of ridiculous, yeah. I thought. <laughs> Especially, you know, for six million fucking views on it. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, that's it. Cool. We're gonna stop watching those. That's enough of my uh, ranting about <laughs> dog training videos on the internet. Yeah, for one day. So yeah. listen, you know, again, Beckham's dog training. I don't have strong opinions either way. Look, is that seems seems cool? You know, seems like uh, he's probably doing good work. Seems knowledgeable and stuff. I don't, I don't like the interpretations of what he's seeing though. Yeah, I don't fully agree with those. So that's my opinion on it. For all y'all that asked, hopefully you guys like it. Yeah.